Bills Mafia. On tonight's Air Raid Hour, we will be breaking down 10 of our favorite running backs in the 2024 NFL Draft. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? How do they fit the Bills? And where are they projected to be drafted? We answer all those questions tonight, but first... One Network Podcast. Here are your hosts, Judge Mathis and Tilt Money. Welcome in, Bills Mafia. We're getting right into it tonight, talking about some of our favorite running back prospects in this draft class. Not going to be as in-depth as some of our other shows where we tear out specific players to specific rounds and, and talk about 20, 30 Sometimes I was pushing 40 prospects because the Buffalo Bills are probably not going to draft a running back as high this year. So we're just going to share 10 of our favorites and we will let you guys in the comment section share your favorites and uh, we will have a grand old time tonight. But let's start first, Dave, with looking at the Buffalo Bills depth chart at running back. They got James Cook entering year three of his four year rookie contract. He has sort of taken over the reins of the Buffalo Bills backfield, both as a pass catcher and as a runner out of the backfield. You've got Ty Johnson on a one year deal and you got Darrington Evans on a future deal. So the Buffalo Bills, they're going to add to the running back room, but chances are you're probably not going to see a running back drafted by the Buffalo Bills until at minimum round four. Yeah, and you think about how the Bills went in the last offseason. They had Latavius Murray. They had Damian Harris. They ended up bringing in Ty Johnson, all behind James Cook. At one point, they had Leonard Fournette. So clearly, the Bills like to have, or they at least last year showed that they wanted mm-hmm. to have some insurance policies there behind James Cook. And so I agree, you have James Cook and obviously fan favorite Ty Johnson back in the mix. But to expect really much out of Darrington Evans probably is a bit naive. So they will add to the room at some point. And if you're the bills, you can wait until this fifth or sixth round, see mm-hmm. if a guy drops, because if it, if it doesn't work out for you, you have $10 million on June 1st, when Trey white, his post June 1st cap money frees up. You still got cream hunt out there. You still got Zeke Elliott out there. There are running backs on the open market that the Buffalo Bills can likely get their hands on to be RB2 if they don't like the way things fall in the yep. draft. Uh, so let's get into it this evening. We're going to share our top 10 running backs, but first, not top 10, but our, our 10 favorite running backs. But first, this show is sponsored by Picasso's Pizza, four great locations in Williamsville, West Seneca, Lancaster, and Blaisdell, Buffalo Pizza since 1980. You can order online at picassospizza.net. And if you're an out-of-towner like us, you could even get it mailed to your home, and we can tell you from experience it is just as good as getting it fresh from the restaurant. Again, that is PicassosPizza.net. All right, tonight we are going to go back and forth sharing our five favorite running backs that the Buffalo Bills should consider in this year's draft. By the time that we are done, we will have shared 10 total running backs. These aren't all going to be consensus top guys in this year's draft. In fact, a lot of these guys won't be the first couple of running backs off the board. Why? As we mentioned at the top of the show, it's unlikely the Bills are going to use a premium pick on a running back this year, but you never know. And I know you slid one of the the upper echelon guys in there into your top five as well. So we'll have a conversation on a few of them, but I would consider this episode, Dave, kind of like an episode of Shark Tank. We're, mm-hmm. we're trying to sell these five guys onto Bill's Mafia here and sort of try and illustrate their f- fit with the Buffalo Bills. So I'll start with you. The floor is yours. What is the mm-hmm. first running back you want to talk about this evening? Yeah, and the first running back I'm going to talk about is probably one out of the entire list of 10 that we're going to share tonight that's likely to be the highest drafted uh, running back of of the 10 that we're going to mm-hmm. share in. I don't necessarily think the Bills have a super realistic chance at landing this guy, but he is really exciting to watch, and I do think um, he would be a really nice complement to a guy like James Cook, had a really strong combine, 
and you just never know. Um, I haven't necessarily seen him as the top ranked running back, but I've seen him as maybe in the top five, top three range. And that's Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Um, obviously was at the senior bowl, ran the four, three, eight 40 at the combine, which was the second best of all the running backs at the combine behind only a guy that you're going to talk about later. So I'll leave that there. Um, look, I like Jalen Wright as a fit. He's got that experience in the zone read style at Tennessee. If you watch a lot of those Tennessee games, it's, it was a lot of zone read. It was a lot of Jalen Wright running out of the shotgun. A lot of the similar types of design plays that you've seen the bills run with James cook with Latavius Murray a year ago. And I think he would be very comfortable in the bills system and what they do offensively, especially if Joe Brady carries that mm -hmm. stuff over into 2024. As I mentioned, the second best 40 time at the combine, he improved his yards after contact each year at Tennessee over the past three years. He was their number 11 overall run PFFs, number 11 overall running back in 2023. I really like his footwork in confined spaces. I thought he did a really nice job in traffic shows patience and he's obviously got the long game to go, but he is 510 to 10. So he's not necessarily a super mm -hmm. slim guy and he's not afraid to get up straight up the field. So, um, not the biggest receiving threat, 22 catches in 2023, which is pretty solid, but can add that to the room as well, especially at times as we saw guys like Murray making some drops last year. So I like Jalen, Wright. I don't think it's necessarily super realistic that the bills get him, but I do mm -hmm. it really enjoy researching him and watching his games. Yeah, a lot of the scouting reports I read on Jalen Wright too talked about how he's probably one of the better, if not the best, pass protecting backs in this entire class as well. So yep. that's an A plus for him. If he was sitting on the board, if he was sitting on the board in round four, man, that would be awfully tempting if you're the Buffalo Bills. A guy like Jalen Wright could really be another spark plug on this offense to work off of a guy like James Cook. So I love Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright, definitely in the fan club. So I agree with you there. Uh, with your first pick. My first pick is a guy who's pretty well-traveled in mm. college football, and that is Ray Davis, who started his career at Temple. Then he made his way to Vanderbilt before finally finding a home at Kentucky. He was a Senior Bowl participant this year. He turned a lot of heads at the Senior Bowl. He turned a lot of heads at the Combine. Five foot eight, 211 pounds, like I said, he's just a workman-like dude. Those three stops that he's had, a lot of buzz about him in the pre-draft process. He reminds me of another Davis, Mike Davis. He's short. He's squatty. Joe Brady got a 1,000 yards out of Mike Davis in Carolina. So maybe Joe Brady looks at a guy like Ray Davis. If you put their RAS scores up next to one another, they are very, very, very similar. A guy like Mike Davis has great vision. He's got a patient running style. He's got pass-catching upside. And, you know, being 5'8", 211, he's that little bowling ball, right? He's got that low center of gravity. He had a pretty good 40, 4, 5, 3, 1, 5, 6 split with a 35 vert and a 9, 11 broad. He is explosive. He had 280 yards this year versus Florida, four total touchdowns, three rushing, one receiving. That was his sort of real breakout game this year. And we've seen Brandon Bean gravitate towards guys who had big games, right? Like yes. Dalton Kincaid did that big USC game. We've seen him gravitate some towards some of those dudes. He's got the frame to grow into being a better pass protector with coaching, but he's not exactly the worst pass protector in the world either at this point. So Ray Davis, to me, I just envision him as sort of a, a perfect complimentary type of back to a guy like James Cook. Yeah. And that's the other thing as we start going through these guys more, right? Like I really honed in on guys that I thought would be compliments to James Cook. Mm -hmm. So it's like, obviously as I, I like a, a guy like Bucky Irving, he's not going to be on my list, right? Because of that fact that I'm um, really tried to hone in on guys that would be compliments to cook. Who is your next guy up here? My next guy will be someone that I think a lot of people like, and obviously Nate Geary is going to be a big fan of this guy played in some really big games. Um, and I think a lot of people were, maybe a little bit concerned about the combine numbers, but then on the pro day, obviously kind of picked up his, um, his testing a bit. And that's Audric Estime from Notre Dame. Um, you know, he had the four, seven, one 40 at the combine and kind of improved that down then into the four fives 
at his pro day. His 6.40 yards per carry last year was the highest in college football of running backs with at least 200 carries. He had the fourth highest yards per carry of running backs with at least 150 carries. He had the fourth best broad jump at the combine third best rushing grade in 2023 per PFF of all running backs in college football with hundred snaps. Um, and I particularly like his footwork in tight spaces, his contact balance had the fifth most 15 plus yard runs in college football in 2023, 12th best yards per carry. As I mentioned, followed up an 11, uh, rushing TD year in 2022 with 18 in 2023 to go along with his 1300 mm -hmm. plus rushing yards, chipped in 17 receptions. That's obviously not his game, but obviously you love him in pass protection as well and just feels like this would be the guy that could be the ideal complement to a James Cook. So Audrey Estime, mm -hmm. no stranger to playing in big games and delivered time and time again um, in his career at Notre Dame. Yeah. So Audrey Estime. You know, I, I've had the pleasure of seeing Audrey Estime in person in the Fiesta Bowl a couple of years ago against Oklahoma State. You know, you go and you watch guys, and some of the guys on the field just look different. Like, Audrey Gastamay just looked different. He had a big game out here in, in Glendale in that game. And he reminds me of, and again, this isn't the best comp in the world because this guy was a top 10 pick for a reason because he was also super fast to go along with that size. But Audrey Gastamay gives me Leonard Fournette vibes. Like, Leonard Fournette, the Leonard Fournette that got to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and kind of like lost a step, like that kind of Leonard Fournette, who was a really, really good player for them in their Super Bowl run. I think Audrey Gastame sort of fits that sort of that like sort of like that's sort of how I envision him, the mm -hmm. way the Buccaneers used him in their in their Super Bowl year. And the Buffalo Bills brought in Leonard Fournette for a reason. They clearly liked Leonard Fournette. Now Ty Johnson stepped up. He never found his way onto the field. So maybe the Buffalo Bills see some of that Leonard Fournette in Audrey Castame and Brandon Bean. Maybe if he's there in the fourth or the fifth round, makes a decision to pull the trigger. My second running back is a guy who has shot up throughout this entire pre-draft process. He had probably probably the the talk of the combine. Yeah, and. Yeah. One of the things that you'll notice in common about all of my guys outside of Ray Davis is they're mostly all Shrine Bowl guys because I really wanted to stick with guys who I thought would be like fifth, sixth, seventh round picks. And every year I love what Eric Galco does. And I love some of these guys he finds for the Shrine Bowl. And I think he found a real gem in Isaac Garendo out of the University of Louisville via Washington. He was a, a transfer from the University of Washington. He was a former four-star recruit. Isaac Arendo, six foot two, 221 pounds. He ran a 4 3 3 40 at the combine. Mm. Had everyone a buzz in 997 Raz. He's a former high school three time state track champion. He is elite in all physical facets. Like he is off the charts, like 99th percentile in most physical facets. When you look at Raz, he had under 250 college carries. But in those under 250 college carries, he had six plus yards per carry. He's dense. He's got a strong build. He's got a strong frame. Like he is an athlete combination of good patience and vision. He's got short yardage and goal line value at that size. His speed around the corner. It is noticeable for a running back his size. And if the Buffalo Bills can get a guy like him around the corner and get him cutting up field, he can be a big play machine. And he can be a big play spark plug for this Buffalo Bills offense behind James Cook. He has RB1 potential, potential too, with all those physical skill sets. A guy who could maybe succeed James Cook if they decide not to give him a second contract. He's got pass catching upside. He's returned kicks in his career, which is more valuable now with the change to the kickoff rules. Mm. He has showed promise in pass protection. When I look at Isaac Arendo, and I mean this as a compliment, he looks like a souped up Ty Johnson a souped up Ty Johnson. We all love what we saw from Ty Johnson last year. Imagine a souped up version of that. I think that's what you're getting in a guy like Isaac Garendo. Yeah, he was certainly the, uh, the, the bell of the combine for sure. <laughs> and you're, I, it's an interesting thought around like the succeeding of James cook, because mm -hmm. this is year three. Obviously he's got the fourth year. And then what happens after that? We don't know what the future may hold. So do the bills get ahead of that? And we know, they do like to take the pressure off James Cook mm -hmm. in certain situations. So third guy for me, um, 
maybe the biggest running back in <laughs> the class and felt running like I had a slash linebacker. The slash <laughs> linebacker. And look, I had to put him on my list only because my my first mock draft Monday of the year last week, I I had him in my mock draft, and that's Braylon Allen from Wisconsin. Obviously the big bruiser, 6'1, 235. Um, didn't run the 40 at the combine, obviously, and that's not really his game, but second most bench reps, um, of all running backs at the combine. So that strength came through only behind Blake Corum, by the way. Um, and he was, he, he can actually catch the ball as well. He had mm -hmm. tw caught 28 of 30 targets in 2023. Um, interestingly enough, he didn't get graded out as a great pass protector, but I think some of that is to do with the style I've seen um, some clips too where he 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 uses that body well. Yeah, exactly. And I think so that's a little bit misleading in there. Um 13th best yards after contact per attempt of all running backs with 150 carries, 3.77 yards there. Um he certainly has patience, but I think he's going to have to be a guy at the next level that really just like puts his foot in the ground and gets up field. I don't think he's going to mm -hmm. be much necessarily much more than that. But I mean, if you're looking for a guy that you can have roam around near the goal line and have a guy that you can rely on in short yardage and take some of that pressure off of Josh Allen running in some of those design short yardage plays where maybe you don't want him to get hit. And I'm not talking about quarterback sneak situations mm -hmm. where we want Josh Allen to do that, but like the fourth and twos, the third and threes, those types of situations, then Braylon Allen to me is yeah. interesting. Um, I think I, you know, for me, he's on the list because of his complimentary um, skill set to cook. But I can also understand why, but maybe some people are mm -hmm. are not. It, he he's not the most exciting guy, I'll say, yeah. but he can do the dirty work. So I put him on the list. Yeah, I mean, Braylon Allen is twenty years old right now, too. Right, mm -hmm. like his breakout age was not even eighteen; it was like seventeen and three quarters. Like. We talk about breakout age with a guy like Xavier Worthy, how they broke out so young and had their best start to their career so young. Braylon Allen is the same way. I mean, this kid's been a stud since his walk-on freshman year at yep. the University of Wisconsin. Another guy I've had the pleasure of seeing in person out here in the desert at what was formerly the cheez Bowl. I don't even remember what it's called now, but I mean, the dude just looked different. He walked different. He talked different. He ran different. He just strided different. He is a different kind of player. Um, he elected not to run at his Wisconsin pro day either. I just Googled it, which yep. is pretty telling that his time would not have been great. So, <laughs> um, <seven> it'll, <laughs> it'll be really interesting to see how that affects his draft stock and how teams view his decision, just straight up not to run a 40, which is something we're seeing a little bit more of, um, from some of these prospects over the last couple of years, something we've never really seen before. So that'll be really interesting to see, but Braylon Allen, man, fourth again fourth fifth round if he's still sitting there and the buffalo bills decide to pull the trigger i will be excited i am definitely a big fan there are some red flags to braylon allen but if you're bringing him in squarely as just a pure athlete give him the ball uses big body and pass protection right like mm -hmm. number two behind james cook i am all for getting that type of athlete on our football team injecting that into our offense my number three running back is Tyrone Tracy out of the University of Purdue via the University of Iowa. 5'11", 209 pounds. He ran a 4'4", at the Combine. He's another guy at the Combine who turned heads. He had a big, big week at the Shrine Bowl, 987 Raz. So again, another guy who's elite percentile in everything that he tested. Former wide receiver, he's still developing as a running back. Like he was legit for three years, a wide receiver at the University of Iowa before transferring to Purdue to play running back. So he is new to the running back position. He's still developing, and he still had a really good year at the University of Purdue. Long strider. He's got kick return flex. He's also played a ton of special teams. As a depth receiver at Iowa, he played a ton of special teams, like kick coverage units and things like that. So Tyrone Tracy just gives you so much versatility. He can play special teams. He can return kicks. He can catch the ball really smooth out of the backfield. He can play slot receiver. He can play running back. He could be this draft's Tony Pollard. Now, he was a Shrine Bowl invitee who had a good combine. To me, 
that might get might get him into the fifth round, right? Yep. We had this conversation a couple of shows ago. If you're in the Shrine Bowl, unless you're an exemption like Zay Flowers, like Mason McCormick is going to be one of those exemptions this year. Maybe we should slow our roll with maybe over projecting them and where they'll be drafted. But the combination of Shrine Bowl, good combine, fifth round, a guy like Tyrone Tracy, who I've seen him in some draft Twitter communities, top five running backs in this draft. I think that would be another really good guy to compliment James Cook, a guy to have in case James Cook gets hurt because he has a very similar skill set to James Cook and what he can do as a receiver and, and all those different things. So he might not be the compliment in the sense that he can do the between the tackle stuff or he could be that bruiser, but he is the compliment in that he, he, you know, you can do the same stuff on the field with James Cook that you can do with Tyrone Tracy. Yeah, I like Tyrone Tracy a lot. Uh, probably um, would be on a joint list if we both made a list together for mm-hmm. sure. Um, fourth guy for me is maybe one of my favorite prospects in the entire draft, regardless of position. He's probably going to be my no matter what running back when we do our no matter what lists mm-hmm. for each position. And it's a guy that was kind of caught my eye since very early on in the process. He was kind of, he was on my non trendy names to watch going into the combine and small school guy, Kamani Vidal from Troy, who really I think helped himself out at the combine with some of his testing, especially in his with some of his speed numbers for four six. He ended up coming out with an eight point eight one Raz when all was said and done. Was at the senior bowl, obviously, 5'7, 213, mm-hmm. but one of the best pass protectors in the country. The analytics on his pass protection line up with the tape. Jim Nagy's been obviously very um vocal in his support, rightfully so, being a senior bowl guy. But um the combine really solidified Vidal to me, right? And so second most yards after contact in all of college football in 2023. So obviously playing at Troy you like to see that he's able to kind of shake, you know, shake some of those tackles at that level of competition. So second, most yards after contact, most 10 plus yard rushes in college football last year of any running back. He had the eighth best run Mm -hmm. blocking grade in college football last year, fifth best of those with a hundred snaps and double digit rushing TDs the past two seasons to go on top of that 92 career receptions, averaging 23 receptions, per season on average. So um, really a good complete package. The height is the one thing you look at and you're like, can Mm -hmm. he hold up at the next level? He's got the frame. Is the height a concern? All other boxes to me are checked for him, especially when it comes to pass pro. So Kamani Vidal um, on my list this year. Yeah, I I made sure when when I texted you, like, here are my five running backs. I made sure to at the end, I saved (laughs) Kamani Vidal for you. Uh, Because I know how much you love him. I know that we, we both sort of zeroed in on him when we were talking about with, with John Helmkamp in our, in our senior bowl wrap up show as a guy that stood out to him. And then I think both of us started to really dig into to Vidal and, and love his game. And if he, if he wasn't already your, uh, no matter what running back, he probably would be mine. So I'm going to have to go and I'm have to find someone else now because I'm, I'm giving you, you this one this year, Vidal, baby, Josh Jacobs, Daniel Jeremiah called him at the combine again, just that's a complimentary skill set to a guy like, uh, to a guy like James Cook, a guy you really like to have that guy in your team in November, December, when your team needs to maybe run the ball between the tackles. You really like to have a guy like that on your football team in the fourth quarter when you have a two touchdown lead and you need those tough yards um, to sort of continue to grind and run the clock down. So big fan of Kamani Vidal's game. That combine really helped him out. Yep. I mean, fourth, fifth round could be a place where you see a guy like Kamani Vidal go in this draft. My next running back on the list, my number four running back, it's this name's going to sound familiar to you folks. And that is because he is the son of former Buffalo bill and future NFL hall of famer, Frank Gore. That is Frank Gore jr. Out of Southern miss university, even though he spurned my UB bowls and decided to go to Southern miss, even though he had an offer from UB, I'm still putting Frank Gore jr. On my list, five foot eight, 201 pounds, ran a four, five, eight 40 at his pro day chose not to run at the combine, 
nothing came easy for him at Southern Miss behind that offensive line, but he was still able to rack up yards and create something out of nothing. That is the type of running back he, he is. Those types of make you, you know, make you miss in a phone booth type of running backs are a lot of fun to watch. He is a limited receiver, but he's pretty viable in sort of the dump off game. He's got the body to pass protect, but needs some fine tuning. He had a huge shrine week and he capped it off with an explosive 49 yard touchdown run in the game, 80 plus yards rushing in total. He's very Devin Singletary like, and a lot of people aren't going to want to hear that, right? Mm -hmm. But he's very Devin Singletary like, and if you can get that in the sixth round or the seventh round or as a priority free agent, that's a heck of a lot more fun than getting it in the third round um, for a guy like Devin Singletary. So lateral agility and quickness, contact balance. He forces missed tackles. He's got good vision, good patience to find those run lanes. Like I said, make guys miss in a phone booth. Frank Gore Jr. is, is, is a really fun watch. And uh, one of my favorite running back prospects, not the best running back, clearly, but as a guy to come in and be a compliment to James Cook, a, a second or third running back on your football team, I love Frank Gore Jr. in that kind of role. Yeah, I mean, how would you not? It would be automatically endearing to all the fans if he came in, right? I mean, he's mm-hmm. just got that going for him, and you know that he's going to give you everything he's got um, on every snap just because of that pedigree and from what we've seen. Uh, rounding out my list, uh, the compliment to Dejun Edwards in Georgia was for me, Kendall Milton from Georgia, um, six, one, two twenty five, pretty good Raz 8.0 Raz when all was said and done. Um, he had the best 10 yard split of all the running backs at the combine sixth best broad jump at the combine of all running backs. Um, you start to look at some of his advanced stats. Obviously, he had the huge touchdown numbers last year, 14 touchdowns, but 13th best yards after contact average of all running backs with 100 snaps, um, just outside the top 20 as far as a pass blocking grade for mm-hmm. running back with 100 snaps, so he can give you that added benefit in pass protection. Um, he's got a good nose for the goal line. He's got a good nose for the yards to gain. Showed patience, I think, to me and good vision behind obviously a really good offensive line at Georgia, but still I I did like his patience and I liked that way that he kind of like finds his way through the hole. He had some burst um, and doesn't shy away from contact. He's obviously not got the top high end speed only ran the four, six, two 40, but that's not really what you are getting him for, right? You're getting him for Mm -hmm. that complimentary role. And by the way, just another fun fact, he's a former, I'm sorry, not former. He's the, his, Uncle is Kevin Hardy, who was the former number two overall pick in the NFL draft in 1996 at linebacker. So that shows you Mm -hmm. where things have changed in the NFL, where you had a number two overall pick as a linebacker. We're not even talking about a linebacker being picked in the first round this year, but he's got those family ties, some good pedigree there for Mm -hmm. Kendall Milton. So I like Kendall Milton to round out my list for tonight. Somebody the Bill Scouts have been in contact with. So there were some reports. Kendall Milton did an interview with the Draft Network. He spoke. He said, yeah, I've I've met with the Buffalo Bills a couple of times. You know, he seemed like they had some positive meetings. I project Kendall Milton as a priority free agent. I don't think he gets drafted. But as a priority free agent, that's a really, I think, high upside priority free agent. So big fan of Kendall Milton. I like the way he just seeks contact. That's yep. something you always like to see from a linebacker. Kind of got some Chris Ivory vibes to his game a little bit. Um, my last two, I ended up going with a tie for my last two because they're pretty much very, very similar players. And the tie I went with, the first is is Blake Watson, the one I texted to you. On the I next like Blake Watson. Surprise to you. Uh, but Memphis via Old Dominion, five foot nine, 200 pounds. So not exactly like that, you know, thunder and lightning with James Cook, but a 43940 at his pro day, 415 vert, 113 broad, absolute combine snub. This is a guy who, much like to uh, much like Tyrone Tracy, was a former wide receiver. He's an elite athlete, he's explosive, he's a natural pass catcher. He had some big kick returns early in his career at Old Dominion. He's a playmaker in space. 557 yards after the catch in 2023 per PFF. We talked about at the top of the show, Joe Brady likes these yards after the catch, these yak guys. He wants to do more underneath stuff. 
in this maybe in this new offense a guy like Blake Watson dump the ball off to him or try to create something for him to get him the ball in space and he will make plays he had a huge shrine week he capped it off with almost 100 all-purpose yards in the game so Blake Watson I don't know if the Buffalo Bills are going to zero in on a running back like that kind of that water bug type but if they like do him. Blake Watson is a big one and then this guy I talked about in our combine show as well, and I just wanted to make sure we added him at the end. And that's Keelan Robinson out of mm. the University of Texas, right? Career backup, but he was recruited to Alabama, and then he transferred to Texas. So clearly this guy is a pretty good athlete going from Alabama to Texas, but at Texas he played behind Bijan Robinson, Jonathan Brooks, Roshan Johnson throughout his career. I didn't go back to see who he played behind at Bama, but I'm sure there were probably some pretty good running backs there too when he got to the combine right he ran a 442 40 had a bronze jump 10 4 this is a guy who can run he's a good receiver he's got return flex there are a couple of people at the combine and watching the combine coverage that sort of said like hey this guy could be this year's keaton mitchell right mm. who had a nice blow up his rookie year for the ecu uh or from ecu for the baltimore ravens so Keelan Robinson is a guy I just want to throw in there at the end as as somebody I like as well, sort of as a 5B uh, to Blake Watson's 5A. All right, I'll throw my honorable mention then. Is, Ooh, uh, there we go. George Holani from Boise State would be my honorable mention. Go look him up if you haven't. Yeah, I have not had a chance to look into George Holani yet, and I'm not going to lie to you. It's a 1,000% because he doesn't have a good name. Yeah, it's not a good name, but he, like, <laughs> just watching the way that he kind of, like, sets up routes as a mm -hmm. running back from out of the backfield, especially on some of these choice routes. And it, it was just fun to watch him. So George Lonnie, I don't know if he's the perfect compliment to James Cook, but I had fun watching a couple of the Boise state games with him and really, he, he really got really well too. I think. Yeah. I good, so. good, 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 good chops as a receiver uh, mm -hmm. out of the backfield as well. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Join us next week. Next week, we're going to do exactly what we did Monday night, but we're going to do it for day two targets. So I know it kind of stinks because right now the Buffalo Bills only have one pick on day two, but we're going to talk about all the guys who the Buffalo Bills could be targeting in round two. We could be taught, we're going to talk about all the guys the Buffalo Bills could be targeting in round three if maybe they trade back or decide to trade back up. So we're going to have that day two target conversation. And next week, we'll also talk about some of our favorite offensive linemen as well in our second show. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And until next time, go Bills. Go Bills. Thank you for watching tonight's episode of the Air Raid Hour. Make sure to hit that like button on the way out. If you are catching the show on demand, leave a reply in the comment section and we will respond over the course of the week. You can always listen to every episode next day on all major podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify by searching Air Raid Buffalo. Thank you for your continued support, and as always, Go Bills! <laughs>